You look at this White House now, and it's hard to imagine two FBI agents ending up in the sit room. How did that happen? I sent them. <laughs> um, um, something we, I probably wouldn't have done or maybe gotten away with in a more organized investigation, a more organized administration. The FBI wanted to send agents into the White House itself to interview a senior official. You would work through the White House counsel and there'd be discussions and approvals and who would be there. And I thought it's early enough, let's just send a couple guys over. <laughs> That was Jim Comey talking about Mike Flynn, who was Donald Trump's first national security advisor. Mike Flynn pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about his contacts with Russians and became a cooperating witness in the Mueller probe. But the problem with Flynn wasn't just that he lied about his contacts with Russians and got caught doing it. It was that he was a potential target for blackmail by the Russians because they could leverage those lies over him. I asked former FBI Director Jim Comey if Donald Trump didn't pose the same threat. Sally Yates testified before Congress that she had to come over and tell the White House that Mike Flynn was a potential target for blackmail because the Russians knew the truth. Why wouldn't Donald Trump be a similar target for blackmail if for, until two weeks ago the Russians knew more than we did about Donald Trump's interest in doing business in Moscow? I'm going to be a little careful with you here because I, I don't want to talk about things I know from the investigation uh, from uh, the election to when I was fired. It, it's obviously a concern about any public official if there's significant information that would expose them to embarrassment or to liability that a foreign adversary knows. Those are leverage points. It's the reason we told him about the prostitute business. We didn't know whether it was true or not and frankly didn't really care except we wanted to do a defensive briefing. So in case there's something to it, we undermine the adversary's ability to, to use it as leverage by telling the person who might be blackmailed, look, the FBI knows all about this. Right. Joining us at the table, columnist and author Mike Lupica and former RNC chairman Michael Steele. Heather Kim and Frank are all still with us. I mean, Michael Steele, wow. And, and I have yeah. to say, I interviewed him for over an hour. That was the only time he said those words. I have to be careful because of what I know about the investigation from the time starting at his election and going through my firing. The only answer, the only thing he wouldn't answer was whether or not Donald Trump wasn't a potential target for blackmail. Right. And I think that's the crux of what, you know, sort of feeds this this storyline for Mueller is connecting all those dots. Everyone who's a player, the 14 that have been identified and many others potentially out there uh, who's still going to be named, indicted or charged in some way, um, just tells you how deep this really is and how much Donald Trump really should be afraid of what this means for not just his administration, but for him personally. He seems to think, Mike and I were talking about this a little early, he seems to think that all of this ends when Mueller sends out his report. I'm like, baby, you've got state charges. You've got probably additional federal charges that could come mm -hmm. from this. Um, and it all hinges on how he did business. For him, everything was a transaction. Um, and he saw it as innocent. But as we now know, uh, and as Comey indicated in, in that, just that little snippet, um, this ran a lot deeper and involved a lot more uh, than, than certainly Trump wants to admit. And, Mike, this was clear to me. He... he, he he kept, you know, because we, we got into the difference between the investigation into Trump's campaign and the Hillary Clinton email investigation, and he kept coming back to the idea that this was a counterintelligence investigation. This involved really bad potential American adversaries, um, and, and the reason that wasn't made public was to protect their leads, to protect the evidence. Right. They had four people under investigation, four known, four Trump associates. I tried guessing. He, he, he wasn't too much help. But what do you make of the fact that Donald Trump, was briefed about a, a P tape from Moscow because they didn't want him to be blackmailed over that. But we just found out that after he became the nominee of his party, he was still trying to build Trump Tower Moscow. Yeah, that, to me, of all the stuff that has been rolling out over the last month, that stuff, the Trump Tower in Moscow, it's like in the old Alfred Hitchcock movies, there was always a MacGuffin, okay? Hmm. The MacGuffin might turn out to be that deal. Because, you know, Mike and I were talking about this. This is death by a thousand cuts yeah. with Donald Trump yep. right now. It's just, it, yeah. it, 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 Arthur Ashe once described John McEnroe's tennis game, a nick here, a nick there, and pretty soon you're bleeding to death, okay? And I, I just wonder if this guy is aware enough to understand how deep these wounds are 
And I think he has underestimated Mueller from the start. Yeah. This is an incredibly careful man. This man is not going to put a great American life like he's pushing chips to the middle of the table without knowing he has got every T crossed and every I dotted. Um, go ahead. I was just going to say that, you know, there's this sense, and I, I was on Meet the Press, and I was there with um, a Republican uh, former governor who was trying to defend this was when the news first came and when the Kremlin had just confirmed that they, in fact, had been uh, in talks for this <laughs> Moscow deal. Can, 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 yeah. can we can yeah. we make it sound like that is? Yeah. We, we, we got confirmation from the Kremlin, yeah. so it's a go. So that our president had, in fact, lied That's to the crazy. American people. And he sat there and he was unable to, right, because what's the defense, right? What is the defense to that? He was unable to acknowledge the facts. And this is what Ryan Paul did as well, right, yeah. on the campaign finance. He said, well, if you, you know, misclassify some things or fill out some forms wrong, no, 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 that's no, no, a big no. problem. Oh it's like, wait a second, this is hush money. But it's that same issue where we know that, in fact, Donald Trump knew that this was a problem because he lied to the American people about mm -hmm. it. Now he's saying it's no big deal. The Republican spin is there's no, it's no big deal because of course, you know, he's a businessman. A of course he was trying deal. to, a yeah, exactly. deal. but he had to say multiple times, I have no business dealings in Russia. Nobody I know has had contacts or deals mm -hmm. with any Russians. He said that over and over and over again, he knew it was a problem. And we have to stay clear about that piece. And it could be an even bigger problem because he lied to the American people, but we don't know what he said to federal investigators. We don't know what uh, everyone in his uh, administration has said to members of Congress. If he lied to them, those are, those are additional felonies right. uh, in all of this. And the president, to the messaging part, it seems that the focus, at least up until now, has been trying to discredit Robert Mueller personally, right. as if that's going right. to end yeah. this in some way. And there has been all, little, if any, defense on the facts of what's happening. Now we're seeing, well, this is just a private transaction. I think that's Big one notes, of the first yeah. times that right. we're actually seeing, okay, it right. 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 Yeah. 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 let me bring Frank in. Frank, what did you hear when you heard the former director of the FBI describe sort of how careful he had to be in answering, um, you, you know, just the cable host asking if the president wasn't just like Mike Flynn and that the Russians knew something we didn't know and he would have had an interest in keeping that secret. Yeah, I, I think it was almost a slip, Nicole. I, I think for the first time we've heard Comey imply accidentally that he does have more knowledge than we have on the topic of compromise. And I'm not necessarily saying that has to do with the infamous allegations involving the Ritz-Carlton Moscow, but I think it has to do with something. And he knows more investigatively from his days as director and, and I think it was a slip, and I, I, I think it's significant. I also, Nicole, want to bring up a, a, re, a related issue on this compromise thing, and that, and that is the, that I've not seen fully explored, and that's the issue of conflict of interest. Now, mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, let's assume in, as the days unfold, we have decisions that have to be made on a geopolitical scale involving Russia, whether it's a submarine off our coast, whether it's naval aggression against Ukraine, whether it's Crimea or Chechnya, I no longer have any confidence, I, I, I didn't have any to begin with, mm -hmm. but now with the filings on Friday, that this president can act in the national interest and not in his own self-interest, whether he would overcompensate and be overly aggressive against Russia in the decision, or whether he needs to back off and, and kind of go, go lenient. And I see a, a huge issue re involving conflict here that I don't hear anyone addressing. Well, Frank, let me, let me press you then because you, you make a really good point. I, I don't want to skip over it. I mean, would you go so far? I mean, so far, all the public facing policies are in, are in the latter category that he's gone too lenient so far as to believe Vladimir Putin over the U.S. intelligence community. Would you go so far as to suggest that he continues to be compromised? Do you think he's acting in the interest of the Russians? I don't. I don't think he's any. I don't think he's capable anymore of making unilateral decisions that are truly solely in the national interest when it comes to Russia. Look, look, wow. he chose not to meet with Vladimir Putin in Argentina, right? That that was window dressing. So yeah. that's a, just a small example of where he didn't have to call off a meeting 
with Putin, but he felt he needed to for the point of optics. How far do we take that for optics? And do we do are we going to see naval uh, aggression over something that shouldn't result in that? And and I wonder if he just needs to have other people in the room, Mattis and and others, to kind of witness and weigh in so that no unilateral decision is made that can be second guessed. But you just gave us a reassurance that doesn't happen with Donald Trump. He met alone in a room with Kim Jong Un. He met alone with Vladimir Putin. Even a casual pull aside took place alone with Vladimir Putin and Vladimir Putin's translator. So we we don't even have that safeguard, Frank. Yeah, the, guard, the guardrails aren't there, and, and we had what any semblance of adult supervision that was left with regard to General Kelly uh, and his departure, and boy, his, his supervision wasn't successful. Um, we, have, we have no one wanting to step up and be uh, chief of staff. This is a real concern when someone is dealing with uh, our, our leading adversary and, and I think is compromised in a way that prevents him from making the most logical judgments. Mind blown. Check. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.